I present you the most cool animal ever existed. At the same time that we saw the Cuvier's beaked whales, we heard the clicks of sperm whales for the second time. But this time, we had better chances of finding them because the water was so incredibly calm. So we didn't have to head back to the harbor. We could stay out longer and follow the sounds. This part here, this part here, and this little guy down here. These are two microphones. We put them in the water, so we call them hydrophones. The hydrophone is an underwater microphone. It's just a long tube that gets placed underwater, and it has two sons. One of them at the front right, and one of them at the back at the left side. You can hear wherever the clicking or wherever the sound is louder, if the animal is in front of us or if it's behind us. And then you just have to kind of try out and change direction of the boat a bit to see if it's more coming from the left or to the right. And that way, the captain of the boat was able to figure out which direction we had to go. And the first sperm whale we saw was a baby. There you go, look, look. Whoa! Oh my God! It's a calf. Oh, wow! Did you see it? Yeah. So close. And in the footage, you can see it a little bit because the water is clear, but it looked a lot better in real life. Oh. This is a calf. Calves and youngsters are much, much more curious, as you can see. This calf that we saw was probably already six meters long and it's just a baby so you can imagine how big these animals are. Now you might think that oh seeing a baby sperm whale without its mom is a bad sign but it's actually completely normal because moms leave their babies relatively close to the surface when they go diving. They dive like a thousand meters deep to feed and they feed on squid and babies can't dive that deep yet and when they're diving they're constantly communicating with each other through clicks they also use clicks for echolocation and those clicks are much louder than the normal clicks they use for communicating so they can travel much further and what's interesting is that once they found a squid once they're closer to an animal their clicks get faster it eventually sounds like Trrr. it's 200 clicks per second and then the clicking stops and if it stops for more than two seconds, that means that the sperm will like, catch the, the prey and is eating. But if it stops for less than two seconds and then it continues clicking, that means it didn't catch the squid or whatever, and it's still chasing it or chasing another animal. And eventually we heard more clicks of sperm whales. And when they stop clicking, that means they're coming back to the surface because at the surface, they don't click. So our captain turned off the engine of the boat and it was quiet. And we were all looking around. We had a 360 degree view around us. Everyone was looking in one direction and we were waiting. And after five to six minutes, you see the first blow in the distance. I saw it, yeah. There you ah. go. Did you see the blow now? Yeah. Oh, they're there. Look ahead, Allison. Like one o'clock, 12 o'clock, one o'clock, it blows. And then we got so close to the sperm whale. It was a female with white patches. The sperm whales rest at the surface for around 15 minutes. Maybe not. I present you the most cool animal ever existed. Is it the mother? What? Is it the mother of the calf? Well, I have no idea. <laughs> wow. And there are big whales. The males are 18 meters long. The females are a bit smaller, but um, they're not quite as large as fin whales, but they're still pretty huge. She's a female. Because she has the females, they have a callosity on the dorsal fin. Oh, 
when you see them on top of the surface, you only see like a little bit of it because the blowhole is relatively far in the front, but they have a huge head. The head of a sperm whale is one third of the entire animal. So if an animal is 18 meters long, the head alone is six meters long. Their blowhole is on the front and a little bit to the left side. So when they blow, it's not straight up into the air as you would expect for with a fin whale blow, but it's more to the left side and not as high. See, when after, after diving for such a long time, they are quite lethargic and, and, and quiet at the surface. And when they go down, they beautifully show their fluke. Oh, she's going down. Prepare your cameras. The fluke of the sperm whale is from one tip to the other five meters wide. That's already almost the length of a small bus. And once you have a sighting shift, you record the interval of the blows. So however much time there is between one blow to the next blow, because that way you can find out, for example, if an animal is stressed. If the animal is stressed, it blows at a faster frequency. That sperm reel took really short dives too, around 20 to 25 minutes. After that time, the same sperm reel resurfaced. We knew that it was the same one because it had the same white patches on on its dorsal fin. So then again, she was resting for like 15 minutes on the surface. The lifestyle of sperm whales is really interesting and so similar to elephants because the females live in family groups with their calves, males and female. And once the males have reached sexual maturity, they leave the family group and they go on to live in loose bachelor groups or on their own. And then she went down and showed her fluke again. Venta. This is the one. Marine animals in the Mediterranean face specific threats that they might not face so much in other areas. The ocean is facing an existential crisis. Headline news focuses on plastic pollution, but another threat lurks beneath the surface. Chemicals found in sunscreens are getting washed and then contaminating the sea grass that's found in the Mediterranean Sea. An orange-brown chemical sheet spread over 15 acres of a nationally recognized marine life area in the French Mediterranean. They're exposed to chemicals a lot more than animals in the Atlantic or the Pacific Ocean because compared to those huge oceans, the Mediterranean is a small puddle and it, it's very enclosed. It doesn't have many openings. So as you can think, the water exchange is really, really slow, which makes chemicals and other pollutions stay in the water much longer. Another threat that animals face are collisions with vessels. Those can be really devastating and, and fatal. And you can clearly see that the motorboat, they have no clue that there is a whale down there. So imagine how easy is to end up in a collision. That's always unfortunate and this is why protected areas like the Pelagos Sanctuary are so important. Remember, we were out there for a couple of hours and at one point we heard five sperm whales clicking at the same time. The sperm whale clicks are the loudest sound in the animal kingdom, and they are the frequency that the human ear can hear. So we follow the clicks of one of them, and then again, 
the boat was quiet, the engine was turned off. And at that point, I got really good at spotting the first blow of the sperm whale. And we said that once we see an animal or we see something, we should say the direction based on the time. So 12 o'clock would be in front of the boat, 3 o'clock would be to the right side, 6 o'clock would be behind the boat and 9 o'clock would be to the left side. So we would be able to go to the sperm whale. And this time it was a mom with a calf. And it's very likely that this was the same calf that we saw before, but the female sperm whale was not the same one with the white patches. is full of white patches at least and the mom has got something white on her head i think see sí, see sí. so they were resting there for a couple of minutes and eventually they dove down but without showing their fluke They got away a bit. Once they popped up, we approached them slowly again. This time they felt a bit more comfortable with us because they were staying there. They were resting and breathing. Yeah, but yeah. I so they did a little shallow dive to scooch away from us. A little bit just under the water surface. It's a well-known kind of like defensive behavior of sperm whales. The gestation period of sperm whales is 14 to 16 months. That means they're pregnant for over a year. Once a baby is born, it nurses for four to five years. Eventually, after a couple of minutes, they both went down at the same time. We first see the fluke of the baby go up because the baby is shorter and then the fluke of the mom, but probably the mom initiated the going down. And then it was sperm whale after sperm whale. We heard the clicks, we followed the clicks, turned off the engine, waited until it popped up. And at one time we waited and we waited and we didn't see any sperm whale come to the surface. Somehow we missed it. But the next sperm whale, we didn't miss that one. And this one was special to me because for that sperm whale, I was sitting at the best seat in front of the boat. And that was the sperm whale where the water was by far the calmest. And that was the last sperm whale that we saw. Is he diving? No, he's still there blowing. We only see them for such little time on the surface, but most of their life happens underwater. Sperm whales have culture, and we know that because they have so-called codas. Codas are stereotype cliques. So for example, in the Mediterranean Ocean, there is a very common coda called the three plus one coda. It's three faster clicks, then a pause, and then another click. And codas are culturally transmitted, so they're learned. Those sperm whales aren't born with them, they learn them based on which area they grow up in. You can compare this to dialects. A person from Alabama sounds different than a person from New York, right? And 
two people from New York sound very similar based on their accent. They don't have to be from the same family, but they have a similar accent nonetheless. And it's similar with codas. Sperm whales have a huge set of codas. They don't just use one specific coda. So that way they know, okay, you are from here and you are from there. So they have pretty much different dialects or different accents. All the whales that use the same codas, they are called a social clan. And there are multiple clans in the Mediterranean Sea. They all use slightly different codas to communicate with each other. So they all speak different dialects. When the whale finally goes for a dive again, it might be calling its family in its own language. I really hope you like this mini-series about cetaceans in the Mediterranean. I certainly learned a lot and thank you for watching.